What's going on everybody? Chris Esplin back with more Firebase. Today we're going to cover Firebase Q. Firebase Q is fantastic. I love it. It lets me use Firebase as a message bus between my clients and my server. So instead of using REST in your typical API system where you make calls from the client directly to the server over port 80 or port 443, you don't do, do that anymore. You don't need to. You just add jobs to a queue from the client in Firebase. So they stack up in your queue and then your server in Node.js listens to the queue and responds. It's great. So let's check it out. I've installed Firebase. I've initialized Firebase. Pretty straightforward, we've covered that before. This time, I'm actually gonna give this app a name. We're gonna call it Test. Because we're gonna have two apps running at the same time, we don't want them to collide. We can't use the default app name for both. So we're gonna call this app Test, this Firebase app. Next, we get a queue ref. We're gonna save all, all of our login queues. In this case, we're gonna sort of fake a login queue, because I like to do this a lot with my clients. Every time they log in, they'll push an event, push a, a job to the login queue, usually with their uh, JWT JavaScript web token object from their authentication it, and it pushes I push that authentication object to the queue and then I can log it on my back end and manage their user account okay so Firebase queue slash login queue and my user in this case is just going to be he's a not he's not anonymous his email is verified his email is chris at quiver.is and he has this UID that I made up okay next I'm going to require in index.js and we'll cover that in just a second. And I'm gonna push a job to the queue. Notice it's QREF child tasks. So I have to go to tasks. And then I'll push a timestamp and I'll push a user. So let's comment this out, the handler, and run it quickly here. There we go. Run through. What happens? We get a job, okay? So our queue is gonna be login queue. So my root, or for this demo, I'm using Firebase-Q, and then the login queue is, is right here. Next, we're gonna have tasks. You gotta call, in Firebase Q, you have to have a tasks list. So in this case, I push to tasks. I've got a timestamp, and I've got a user. All right, so this is just a push key, and this is just pushing tasks onto the end of this queue. Okay, great. Now, next time we're gonna run this again, this time, we're gonna pull in index.js index to start up the queue. Here's our queue. Const require Firebase queue. I'm gonna to have to have another Firebase job going, another Firebase app, and this time I'm gonna call it queue so it doesn't, doesn't um, collide. We don't want it to collide with the test app we created in this other file right here. There we go, okay. Now we go to the queue ref, we get the queue ref. We're also gonna manage accounts, so I'm gonna create an accounts ref, Firebase queue slash accounts. Now, I, I make a queue, a queue manager, new queue, I pass in the ref, I pass in options, in this case sanitize is false, because I wanna get the entire object plus all of the metadata that Firebase queue has for that object. And you'll see in a second why that's important. And then I have a callback, basically, which is my man, my my queue function, which takes data and has a progress a progress function, so I can log progress, say put out output numbers, say 10, 20, 30, 40, and then resolve and a reject. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna say, hey, let's make our progress. As soon as we get a job, progress will be 10. And as soon as you get to here, progress will be, let's say, 20. And yeah, that'll be great. So first, test is gonna push a new job, so push the job. That job got picked up by, fire, by this queue. It's listening at the queues ref. It's listening to the queues ref, listening to the task endpoint. It finds the new job. It adds some metadata to it. In this case, an owner, a progress uh, number, state, state changed, and timestamp. And now here we get in here where, where progress is 10. Progress will be 10 very shortly. It's not 10 yet but it will be shortly. All right. Oh, actually, it looks like it caught both of them. It's gonna manage, it's gonna try to manage both of them. It's gonna catch both of these objects and run it twice. Okay, so let's watch that and see what happens. So right here, we're in data. Let's look at what data's got for us. 
Data is, of course, is an object. It's got an ID, owner, progress. So it's basically the same as this task object with these underscores, this sort of metadata, but then we get an ID as well. This ID is going to be critical because it's going to let us manage the user. Let it run. There we go, new task. Step over, let it run. All right, let's, let's just delete everything here and let it go full speed so you can see just how fast this is. Okay, starting from scratch. Let it run, it adds a task job. Oh, bam, right into an account. We've turned it into an account. We've got a UID here, we've got a UID as the key. We've removed this right here, piece of cake. This is how I prefer to manage my user permissions. Every time a user logs in, their client will push their login JWT user object, authentication object, to the end of this queue. My Firebase queue job will pick that up and it will check the email address on there to see what permissions I would like to grant to that user. Let's see how it's done. Okay, I'm gonna make an admin users array with chris at quiver.is, that's my email address. I'm going to say var is admin equals admin users dot find user or just email address email equals equals data dot user dot email. We can actually say data.user.isAdmin is users admin find email. So let's run that, run that here and see what happens. There we go. Check it out, is admin. Now I don't want to just find it. I want to say yes or no. So we log in again and True. Awesome. Now, not me. Let's try it again. False. So you can see how you could use an array like this. You could keep it in Firebase, manage it in your environment variables, lots of different ways to handle it. But you can really quickly control permissions based on these is admin flags or is moderator flag, whatever you want to do. It's a super handy way to just manage user permissions and you, you don't have to give users write access over their account. They can read it, but they can't write it. All they can do is write to their queues. So the, the users write to queues, your server manages these read-only objects, and you maintain fantastic security using Firebase. Thanks for watching. Hope this wasn't too long. I'm trying to keep it short and snappy. Firebase queue is great. I use it for everything. I don't use REST and Express no JS Express APIs anymore. I really just get away with writing entire apps on the backbone of this sort of Firebase queue system. So thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe if you found this useful and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.